what's up guys Tony here and today I'm gonna to do a video for you guys a lot of people have been asking me um, to do a color correction video I had about two or three people asking me directly if you just want to know how I did certain things so I thought I'd just do a full-blown type tutorial type video where I go ahead and basically show you how to do color correction so in order to do this video uh, you're gonna need some sort of an editing program um, I mean, you know, just go out, look for a program. I mean, Windows Movie Maker, Sony Vegas, Final Cut, iMovie, um, they all are about the same thing that I'm going to show you right here. Uh, it's pretty simple, pretty universal, the steps I'm going to do. Now, in order to do this video, I am going to have to find a video that is not going to be giving away too much of what's going to be in my montage. Because, uh... My montage is kind of going to be secret as far as clips. You can kind of see what's going on here, but hopefully you can't see too much. Um, I know I showed that top, that uh, ballistic knife, but it, you didn't see exactly what happened there. And this clip has been used for color correction, so I thought I guess we can use this, even though it's two no-scopes. All right, so first thing you're going to want to do, get your clip in your timeline. This is where all your imported clips show up, and then you got to get your clip into the timeline. Now, on Sony Vegas, the timeline is going to be in the top left. Uh, I think in Final Cut 2, it's the same way, like top left. And your clips, your timeline rather, is going to be in the bottom. And it's going to be a little different. Um, you should be able to go onto your clip settings though and change them around if you want. So what you're going to do once you have it in your timeline is click this uh, one on the top left, or bottom left rather. On every program there's a different way to get to your video adjustments. Uh, you may have to select the clip and go into file and look around there, maybe edit or you know options, anything like that. Um, right click it, maybe try. Um, you'll probably be able to figure it out it's pretty simple and get into your video adjustments now usually my video adjustments will look like this you'll see a color wheel of some sort your red gain saturation brightness these types of things now what you want to do first is find a part in the video with a lot of different colors that looks nice this actually looks really nice with the uh, sun in the background um, what you're gonna do that's a funny emblem uh, <laughs> what you're gonna do is you're gonna increase your saturation by 45 percent or yeah by 45 percent from wherever it is, it probably should be at 100%. I don't know if you can see that that difference in the video. See on the top left, before, after. Quite a bit of a difference, brightens up a lot of the colors. Um, saturation, you don't want to do too much because then it'll look really like ridiculously colorful and you don't want that. And you don't want to do too little because it starts to look more gray. 45 seems to be the good amount. I know 200% uh, is tempting to some people, but in certain parts of a clip, it won't look that good. 45 is a good medium, that's what I should say. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to keep red gain alone. Red gain really doesn't do much to the video quality. Um, you want to work with, work with your green, though. Now, I like to keep it around 89%. As you can see, increasing green makes it really green. Reducing it makes it bluish red, like a purple. Um, I'd go for 89%. Seems like the best way to go. Uh, basically reduces the greens and the green tint you get with any sort of video and you want to increase your blues along with that just a bit though you can also reduce them if you really want to I mean it depends on what video you're editing on certain videos it looks good to increase your blues some videos it looks better to decrease them and come to think of it I'm thinking I should decrease them here yeah I'm gonna decrease them a bit I'm gonna put it down to 89 percent alright so next up what you need to do is usually you'll have the video previewed here. Um, in certain programs, you have to render the video before you can view it in here. Um, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to see this little, see my icon over there by the tree. Uh, it's kind of like a, I don't know what they call those things. Um, but it's basically like something you you kind of click anywhere and change what the video looks like in, according to what you're clicking on. So for example, if I click on this red here, it makes the video very cold. And you don't want that. What you want is to click on a darker color. A darker tone of sorts um, and the darker the color the more it'll uh, enrich in the video and make it nice and warm now uh, I like to go for the grayer tones so the rifles tones are pretty good if you go into the black area it really doesn't do much I don't think but in the gray area as you can see let me give you a good example here it kind of just makes it a little bit warmer I mean from like something like this to this it makes it look a lot warmer and that's what we're looking for now there you go, that's pretty much as far as video settings, that's what you want to do. Uh, when you're making a montage, I recommend you bring down your audio to about 25%. Um, Clip-wise, you can do whatever you want, you can make it slower, you can make it faster. Um, 
and uh, stabilization. Some programs offer that. Really, for a video game, you really don't need stabilization. And another thing I like to do is to add a video effect. Now, depending on what type of video you're looking at, uh, on certain maps that are really dark, I'll add a hard hard light effect. Now, this one's kind of a brighter map, so it doesn't look that good. Um, tell you the truth, I don't think any map or any map, any effect will look good on this sort of a map. But on certain maps, you might want to add hard light. Uh, cartoon is a fun effect. A lot of people like to add this to make like a comic book type look. Uh, if you want to see this using being used by a very a prominent editor, look up Joe Handsome. Uh, raster can be used to show different types of uh, like if the music is like more of a techno type beat, you can use this during a certain part where synths which are like that kind of like, not going to make a sound effect, kind of like weird sounding thing. Uh, or use it just during certain clips. You can watch some of my montages to see how I do that. Flipped, I mean, what, <laughs> I mean, if you want to do flipped, sure, go ahead. Um, film grain, you get the fun people like to put, you know, something like this with a blur on the outside. It looks kind of nice. Dream, uh, if you get a really good clip, it's good to use like a dream or a glow effect. Uh, if you have a themed montage, you know, old world. Bleach Bypass for like a darker montage. Some people actually use this in all their montages. I think Reaps uses it a couple times. And Sci-Fi, you know, you see there's a lot of effects. Some other programs have more effects than others. Um, just use them smartly. I, like, one thing I like to use is, you know, get up to where the clip is, the shot, and I like to split the clip and add an effect to it uh, as soon as I get the shot. So um, that's, you know, it's a creative thing to do. Um, there you go. That's about it for a basic... Um, color correction type settings. Next up, we're going to look into render settings now. Render settings on iMovie, if you export movie, you get literally no options. You get some HD options, and that's it. What you're going to want to do if you're on iMovie, and uh, this basically makes it like a Sony Vegas or a Final Cut editor. You have a lot of choices. You're going to choose um, share, export to QuickTime. I just did that. And it's going to allow you to go into options down here. And you get basically very, very high-tech options, almost as good as some of the programs out there that higher-end people are going to be using. I do use Final Cut sometimes, but I wanted to use a very basic program that a lot of people use. Um, Settings-wise, uh, you're probably going to want to go with H.264 since it, he, it yields the best quality. Um, but MPEG-4 video is also really good because it reduces the size just a bit, and it makes it easier for YouTube to upload. Um, FPS wise, you want to keep it at current. You want to make sure it's the same uh, FPS. Um, as far as keyframes, you can go at all if you want to. I keep it at 24. I, that's what I would do if I were you. Um, best quality, if you want the best quality, if you want small file sizes, go with high. But best is fine. Uh, encoding, best quality, multipass. And that's about that. Now, filter. You want to add sharpen. So before, what it would look like is this. You're going to click on sharpen, open it up, and then you select sharpen and keep it at one at least. Size, um, size wise, I mean, it's up to you. Uh, HD TVR is capture in 1080p. You can keep it at 1080p, or you can reduce it a bit. Uh, I like to reduce it a bit mainly because um, I have a problem with uploading because my internet's really slow, and it reduces the size of the video a bit more. And a big thing, when you come into this thing, it's not going to be de-interlaced. De uh, the HD PVR records in an interlaced format, which is like 1080i, 720i. Um, interlaced makes lines go through the video. It makes the video kind of laggy. YouTube has a hard time with uh, interlaced video. And uh, you want to de-interlace the video. De-interlacing the video, though, will take quite a bit of time to export the video. I mean, I've seen videos that take 10 minutes to export, go up to an hour or two. So it's up to you, really, but if you want the best quality and you don't want lines going through your videos and making it look like crap, de-interlace the video because uh, the video is de is is interlaced when you start. I was having, having a little bit of trouble speaking here, mainly because it's early in the morning, as you can see. But anyway, <clears throat> I just want to do this video because people have been asking for it. Uh, Happy New Year uh, to everyone out there. I haven't made a video on this channel in a while, but um, hopefully this will make up for that. As far as the montage that I promised on the first... Um, I've been having a lot of problems with editing in my program because the video clips are lagging a bit. I found a few solutions, still working on it. Uh, my Black Ops disc broke, and I have about 16 clips here right now, as you can see. And those 16 clips are all good and dandy and all, but um, I like to have 30 clips in a montage, and I can't record any clips without Black Ops. So the thing may be delayed 
till the weekend, and I know that sucks because a lot of people are looking forward to it. But um, maybe I can get it up earlier than that if I try hard enough to uh, get to GameStop and see if I can get a disc. Um, been having problems with getting it, and yeah, so that's about it. Just want to do a video showing you how to do render settings and color correction. Hope this helps. If you want to see an example of the color correction I basically did in this video, go over to my channel and look at the uh, color correction test. Um, that's exactly basically how I color corrected it right here. Um, the one before is the actual color correction. So there you go. Just go check out that video if you want to see how this looks. I am Tony, and I'll see you guys next time.